morning. How are we doing? What we got? Chip, when you're in the bye week and you're going through the offense, well, what did you see as, as the reasons, the causes, of why things aren't I think going? it's the same thing we talked about before. It's just inconsistency at, um, in terms of our production. You know, and I think it's at times there's a breakdown up front. At other times there's a, break, there's a drop. And other times we're not accurate with the throw. You know, it's never, you know, you don't think it is, but you go through the, the process to study everything and go through what you're going to do. But it's not like, hey, it's just this. We make this maneuver here and everything's going to be great. We're going to come out and score 50 points. It's, it's a combination of everything. And really, it's like anything in the game of football comes down to the fundamentals, and it's about executing the fundamentals, whether it's the proper technique in, in terms of blocking somebody or it's the proper technique in catching the football or separating at the top of a route or to give yourself an opportunity to get open or putting the ball where it needs to be at certain times. So. Is, is it this week you're, you're focusing more on fundamentals? No, I think we do focus on fundamentals, but I also think it's, it's one of those deals where you know, it's about being able to take it from the practice field to the, to the game field, and that's the transition that we're not making at, at all times right now. So. Is that why you have optimism? Because you do see it in spurts sometimes. Yeah, I think, you realize that if you did have that consistency... Of I think everybody... I mean, you watch us play. Everybody sees it. There's times where we play really well. You know, you, know, you look at our defense. There's times where you'll go four, five, six series in a row where we're playing really, really good defense and we're getting people off the field. You know, but then something happens. I think the the last game was a prime example where it's a close game at halftime. We come out. The first thing our defense does is a three play drive for minus one. You know, now we're playing good defense. We punt it, but then the gunner runs into the returner and we put the ball on the ground. And now the defense has got to go back out on the field. So. Um, it's about being consistent in all three phases because all three phases contribute to it. So um, that's just one of the examples of it. Do you know if I guess a cynic, a pessimist might say, aren't good teams, good cynic players? Cynic or you? <laughs> <laughs> just say you. Right. Just say I would say. Aren't good teams and good players consistent? Isn't that a hallmark of being a good team? You consistently do things correct? You're correct in that. So is this a matter of young players haven't figured it out and they're not consistent? Well, we do have some young players, but I'm not in the excuse business. You just asked me what it is, and I'm just saying we're not consistent. So I'm not going to make excuses because you're a young player. You're now allowed not to be consistent. There have been young players that are consistent. So it's just a matter of us going out and executing. You are what you are, and our record right now tells us what we are, and that's what we are. Are you looking at shifting any lineup changes because of this change? No. You know, I mean, I think we've – it, aside from the move we made in the quarterback two weeks ago, like I said earlier, everybody has played. So it's not like we haven't played somebody. I mean, everybody that's up and is eligible in the 46 is contributing in some shape or fashion. We rotate our defensive line. Our linebackers are playing. We rotate the outside linebackers. Our secondary is all, depending on our packages, sometimes we got four, five, and even six DBs, DBs in at the same time. All of our receivers play. You know, our running backs have rotated. Um, you've seen all of those guys. So it's it's... It's not, I don't think there's a, hey, we need to insert this guy in a lineup because we haven't given him opportunity. I think everybody's had an opportunity to play at this point in time. You, you mentioned, obviously, a lot goes into passing game and the receivers playing well, the protection being there. But, but for Colin, what does he need to do to improve his consistency? I just think the, for a lot of it for Colin is more reps. You know, again, he, he missed some valuable time there. Um, when you're not the start at the beginning of the season, you, you're the amount of reps you get from a practice standpoint, whether you're here at the 49ers or at any team in the NFL, there's only X amount of reps you can get during the week, and, and most of them, and a lot of times they're all devoted. Some, some, some teams are all devoted to the number one quarterback, and none are given to the backup quarterback at that point in time. So we, we did get him reps when he was the backup, but now we're getting him, obviously, the, the majority of the reps now that he is the starter, and it's just that. It's just, a, you know, the more reps you get, the more consistent he has, the more opportunities. How many times... You know, you, you see a route. That's one of the things in, in the self scout part of it is, you know, is this a good play or a bad play for us? Well, we've run, we've run it four times. You know, we're, we're one of four with a drop. Is it a good play or a bad play? Well, we may not have enough information because we haven't run the play enough. So a lot of the stuff you do from a self scout standpoint, not only do we look at the season, but then you got to look at the last two games because those are the two games that Colin played in. So we look at something and say, hey, this wasn't a good concept for us. We've run it. The statistics aren't good at it. But we only ran it once with Colin. We ran it seven times with Blaine. So is it, does the quarterback change affect that play? So there's, a, there's still a lot of unknowns out there in terms of the lack of reps that he's gotten at this point in time. So he's still not getting 100% of those practice reps? Though. No, no one does. I mean, your backup still has to get reps. So he, that's just switched between him and Blaine. So what, what Blaine was getting before Colin gets now and what, what Colin had gotten before Blaine gets now. Because you still have to get 
your backup ready. I said there are some teams in the league that do that, but that's that's not. I know Peyton Manning was notorious where he wanted to take every rep. He didn't want it, but you also, as a coach, have to get your backup ready because if the starter goes down with a sprained ankle in the first quarter, you can't say, well, the guy we just put in the game hasn't taken reps in the last three weeks because we were trying to get the bulk of the reps to him. That's just kind of a – there's X amount of reps you can run. You know, everybody has – the ones have so many reps they can run during a practice. How many of them are devoted to the starting quarterback? The majority are. We're probably about 80% to our starting quarterback and 20% to our backup quarterback. So. Has the quarterback change improved the offense? And if so, how? I think in certain aspects. I think, uh, you know, the Collins' ability in, in, in the run game has, 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 uh, has given us a little bit added bonus in terms of it. I think sometimes people's decisions to how they play you um, you know, I think Tampa Bay started our game off the other day, played a little bit more man in the beginning of the game. Colin took off on a couple runs on, on, um, on design pass plays, but when the defense has their back turned and now they're all running with receivers, he's taken off. So now it forces you to say, hey, if I'm a defensive coordinator, do I want to play man and now not have our back turned to the defense, have our back turned to the offense and then have the quarterback be able to take off? So now we get more zone in some situations. So um, I, I think there's been some aspects of our offense that, that, that Colin's helped and made an impact on. Just the convenience of where it is. You know, we had looked initially to stay out, you know, because it's an extended stay. We're playing two games um, out east, so to speak. I know Chicago's not in the east, so don't quote me. I know it's in the Midwest, but to not come back in the, in the travel. And I know they've done it here before. To us, it was more convenient to go from Miami to Orlando to Chicago than to, to go somewhere else. So, want to try to make sure we're in a warm weather area, but also still, if it's a storm, they have an indoor facility. So, um, and I know Scott Frost, who is a good friend of mine and coaches at US, uh, UCF, um, you know, a lot of times you say, hey, let's do it here, but you can you? So we, they took a little while to work out the logistics, but that's the reason why. And a lot of teams have done, I think Oakland just did it. They stayed out in Florida for uh, their back-to-back -back games. And, and I know a lot of teams that come west do it. So it's something that's kind of commonplace in this league. I talked to the players, you know, Joe and some of those guys that had done it before, and they, they actually liked it, according to, you know, so I, I, we have a leadership council, and those guys seemed excited about doing it, so. Is there a sports science advantage to doing it that way? Well, you're not changing time zones, you know, so you're, you're, the lack of time on a plane is obviously will have an effect on you uh, in terms of not having to travel. Um, so the travel part of it is eased a little bit, so there's, a, there's an effect from that standpoint. No, because we, we, we only, we, if we were to play, like we played Tennessee, but we're only there for a day, so it wasn't, we never stayed, we never played Tennessee and then played someone else, or never played at Michigan and then stayed to play someone else, so there was no extended stays. And in the bowl games, you always go in seven or eight days before the bowl itself, so um, you got time to get acclimated to, to the time. But we never, I don't think we played on any East Coast bowls, so... You know, we were either in Arizona or the Rose Bowl or, you know, the Fiesta Bowl or the Rose Bowl. Carlos Hyde uh, practicing in a non-contact jersey. Does he have to be fully cleared in practice to play in the game Sunday? He needs to be fully cleared by our medical staff to play in a game. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes and what he can do. And, you know, a, a, lot, of, a lot of the decisions that are made on who plays on Sunday are all made by the medical staff. So it really doesn't mean, you know, I, I can say, hey, I think Carlos looks great, but if, if, the docs and Ferg don't clear them, then it doesn't matter if I th what I think because that's that's not my field of expertise. That's their field of expertise. So, you know, the process is is to get him back involved. Um, he was in a non-contact jersey yesterday. I would anticipate him being in the same thing again today, and then we'll we'll just see how it goes. We still have, you know, it's still really the beginning of the week for us. Yesterday was the day one, but we got a couple more days before we get moving forward. What strikes you about the, the Saints defense too? I think defensively it starts with Cameron Jordan. You know, he, he's certainly the guy that gets your gets your attention when you turn the film on 94 jumps off the tape. You know, you got to be very aware of where he is and where he's lined up because of um, they can cause a lot of disruptions. I think Nick Farrelly has been a real good addition for them inside um, so they can generate some rush with their four down guys that allow them to play coverage. Um, they'll blitz you, but they're not a an all-out, every-down blitz you team. They do have a, a good package, I think, you know, Dennis obviously has got a really good reputation in this league and is a really good defensive coordinator. So I think he varies what he does. Um, they've got two really good safeties in Vaccaro and Jarris Bird um, that kind of run the back end for him. So, you know, those are the guys that are really the focal point of that defense. Last one, guys. What, what's your gauge on the move in the locker room, being one of the six, now coming off the Miami 
I think our, you know, they, they had a break and they came back. I thought yesterday they had a really good mindset in terms of getting back out on the field. I think, you know, it's kind of the, the first day of school again after having a having a, a vacation over the winter time, and now they're back going to work. And um, the next couple of days will be really important for us. But I think yesterday they were really good. So.